Welcome, sisters and brothers. Happy Sabbath. Happy the Sabbath. high Sabbath today. Today is the eighth day of our Feast of Tabernacles, the in gathering. Our brother Paul from Fellowship of the Spirit. Reading today is Brother Mike from Wild Olive Trees. And our lesson today is going to be the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the in gathering. Eighth day, Feast of Tabernacles, the in gathering. There's two messages during the Feast of Tabernacles, sisters and brothers. The first seven days are about God gathering the nation of Israel and all of those that are not physical Israelites that have taken hold of the covenant. That's the first seven days. The last day represents the Father's kingdom. The eighth day represents the coming of our Heavenly Father's kingdom. So when we did the first day, the High Holy Day, the first day of Tabernacles, we dealt with the ingathering portion. What we're going to get, we'll deal with today is the eighth day, the coming of the Father's kingdom, and the physical that leads up to that. The physical signs that the Lord gave us that show us the spiritual of the coming of our Heavenly Father's kingdom. Because we know that all the feast days are a shadow of things to come. And they all point to God's plan for man's salvation, and they all point to the head of that, Christ Jesus. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start this off as we usually do in the law in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. We're going to go right to the law today, sisters and brothers. Eighth day, Feast of Tabernacles, the ingathering. And Brother Mike, whenever you're ready to start us off, brother, Leviticus 23 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So these are the feasts of the Lord. And we know that the God that dealt with Israel was Jesus. We have lessons all over our Facebook pages and YouTube pages for that. Go ahead and uh, skip the 33 and continue, brother. We're going to deal with the particular feast in season now. Uh, yes, read three and four first. I'm sorry. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is a Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Thank you, brother. The first feast of the Lord is a Sabbath day, and that's done in its seventh day cycle. Every seventh day, which we know is Saturday, and that cycle is not changed from the times of our Messiah or from the creation of the world. Go ahead, brother. These are the feasts of the Lord even holy convocations which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. And the rest of the feast of the Lord, the other six are done in their seasons. Skip down to verse 33, and let's look at the season of where we're at today, brother. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. And when we figured out the calendar, we are now in our Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead, brother. On the first day shall be a holy convocation, you shall do no servile work therein. And we did that seven days ago. Go ahead. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. So we feasted for seven days before the Lord God of Israel, Amen. the God of the creation. And now we're having, it's the eighth day, we are having a solemn assembly and a holy convocation. Go ahead, brother. 37. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering and a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon his de this day. And it's a special day because it's besides all the others. Go ahead, brother. Besides the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which ye shall give unto the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep the feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And we're in the eighth day now. Go ahead, brother. And ye shall take to you the first day boughs of goodly trees, branches of palms, and boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. And this is what was commanded of the nation of Israel. That's why a lot of Christians that keep the feast days, those that are kingdom seekers, we go out and we camp for seven days. But it's not saying that we're supposed to go out in tents. Israel was commanded to make booths. 
But we know that we're not going to go out. You can't do it in a forest preserve or whatever. Cut down trees and make booms. We do the best we can. We just go camping and we sleep in tents, which is a man-made structure other than a dwelling, which would be a booth. But we know it's a tent. Paul was a tent maker. I just want to make that clear. Camping is not sleeping in boots, it's sleeping in a tent, but we do the best we can to do what the Lord gave to the nation of Israel. Go ahead, brother. Verse 41. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate it for in the seventh month. One more verse, brother. Ye shall dwell in boots seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in boots. So if you're a physical Israelite, the commandment to you was that you had to dwell in boots for seven days during the Feast of Tabernacles. Let's continue. Let's go to Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Exodus, the 23rd chapter. Exodus 23, let's look at the law of the three feasts because there's a reason we're gathered together and that spiritual connotation of these three feast days points toward when Jesus returns. Exodus 23 and 14, brother. Three, 23 and 14. Three times that sh thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. So we have three feasts in a year that we keep to the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread Thou shalt, eat, thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month Abib. For in it thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. So we keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and we know that the Passover is the day before the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It's not inclusive in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, but it's right before the Feast, and that's a memorial. Go ahead, brother. 16. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. So then you have the feast of Pentecost and the feast of tabernacles, and we're in the eighth day of tabernacles now. Go ahead, brother. Three times in the year all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Three times in the year all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Let's go to the 34th chapter of Exodus. And we're going to pick it up and read one verse, and then we're going to skip. 34, Exodus 34, and verse 18, brother. The feast of unleavened bread shall thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, as I commanded thee, in the time of the month Abib. For in the month of Abib thou came out of Egypt. Yes, sir. Skip to 22 and continue. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of first fruits of wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Same thing we just read. Go ahead, brother. Thrice in the year shall that your shall all your men ch ch children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before uh, thee. Skip to twenty two and continue, brother. I'm sorry. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the feast of ingatherings at the year's end. Thrice in a year shall all your men and children appear before the Lord God, the God of Israel. Three times in a year all men and children appearing before the Lord. Go ahead. For I will cast out the nations before thee and enlarge thy borders. Neither shall any man desire thy land when thou shalt go up to appear before the Lord thy God thrice in the year. So now the Lord says you don't even have to worry about taking care of your houses and securing your property. You come up to me three times in a year and nobody's going to even want to mess with your stuff. And all males have to go and appear before the Lord three times in a year. At the place that he sets his name, sisters and brothers, Jesus isn't here now. So he had it written, it's in all your dwellings that you keep the feast now. But all males had to appear. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter. Deuteronomy 16. Deuteronomy 16. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. 16 and 13, brother, go ahead. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles seven days. After that, thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. And now the Lord's reiterating again in Deuteronomy 16 that you needed to keep these three feasts. And now we know that every man has to appear before the Lord. Go ahead, brother. And thou shalt rejoice in thy feast, thou and thy son and, and thy daughter. And you're going to bring your son and your daughter. Go ahead. And thy manservant. And your manservants. And thy maidservant. And your maidservants. And the Levite. And the priest. The stranger. And anyone other than Israel. The fatherless. The fatherless and the widow, and the little widow that are within thy gates. Anybody that lives within your gates on your property that's part of your family or part of your family structure. All males have to go and appear before the Lord. 
And then you got to bring your entire family with you and all your servants with you to appear before the Lord three times in the year. That's the law of the three feasts, sisters and brothers. Let's go look at who it's for. Let's go to Exodus, the 12th chapter. We know it was given to Israel. We know it was given to Israel. All these commandments in this book are for Israel and the covenant because it's for Israel to teach all the other nations. So what happens if someone other than a physical Israelite wants to serve the same true and living God? Exodus 12, and let's pick it up at verse and read one verse. 49, brother, go ahead. One law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. One law for both, the physical Israelite and the one other than the physical Israelite. Let's go to the 24th chapter of Leviticus. Leviticus 24. Leviticus 24, and one verse, brother, verse 22. Go ahead. Ye shall have one manner of law as well for the stranger as for one of your own country, for I am the Lord your God. So the God that made the covenant with Israel said there's one law for all nations. One more time, Numbers, the 15th chapter. Numbers, the 15th chapter. Numbers 15. And we're going to pick it up at verse 14, brother, and then we're going to skip after a couple verses. 15 and 14, go ahead. And if a stranger sojourn with you, or whosoever be among you in your generations, and will offer an offering made by fire of a sweet Savior unto the Lord, as ye do, so, so he shall do. So whosoever shall be among you, Israel, throughout all your generations, every time a male is born, He's going to go ahead and either continue the generation or start a new one. So as long as men are even being born on this earth, the stranger has to do exactly what Israel has to do. Go ahead, brother. 15. One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourneth with you. And the Lord calls his church the congregation, and he says that that's Israel. I didn't put it in this lesson, but you go to Genesis when Joseph had the dream. And he told his father that the sun and the moon and the 11 stars paid obeisance to him or bowed down before him. And he said, what? Is your mother and your brethren and me supposed to bow down before you? And then when you get into the true church in Revelation, the 12th chapter, when it's explaining how the Lord's going to protect his church in the wilderness, he says the sun and the moon and the 12 stars, and he calls her the woman because that's his bride, the true church of God. And the, the church is the nation of Israel that started in the wilderness. When you take hold of what was given them, you now have taken hold of the covenant, not what was given to Sunday Christians, not what was given by the Catholic Church, Baptist, Methodist, or whatever that have added traditions to the Catholics' traditions. What comes out of this Bible? What comes out of this book? Because this is what was given to the nation of Israel to teach all nations. 66 books of the Bible, sisters and brothers. Tell us where you're at and continue, brother. Middle of 15. Go ahead. An ordinance forever in your generations, as ye are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. Go ahead, brother. One law, one law and one manner shall be for you and for the stranger that sojourneth with you. Skip down to 29 and continue. Ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them. Even one repentance is given from God to anyone that takes hold of the covenant because now no one's common or unclean. Brother Mike dealt with that with the last lesson we did. Go ahead, brother. Verse 30. But the soul that does all presumptuously whether he is born in the land or a stranger, the same reproaches the Lord and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Why, brother? Because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment. That soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. That's why it's so important to rightly divide this word, sisters and brothers, because it's the word that our salvation is tied to, not Israel. Israel is just the nation that the Lord used to teach all other nations. That's why you've got all these Israelite classes that are jumping up around the world that are bringing stuff that nobody's ever heard before. The uncut word of God. How to gain your salvation. 
This is why it's so important. It's got to come from the word, sisters and brothers. And if it doesn't come from the word, it's not from God. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter. Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter. Now, this is what happens when you get to the feast. Deuteronomy 16, you just don't go there and just lay around. Oh, hey, man, have your wife go get you all this food and wine and everything, and you just kick back and sit. Oh, no, sir. Deuteronomy 16 and verse 15, brother, go ahead. Seven days shall thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase and in all thine works of thine hands, therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. And this is talking about the Feast of Tabernacles, but he's going to go further. Go ahead, brother. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. And we read that they've got to bring their families with them. Go ahead. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh -huh. and in the Feast of Weeks, uh -huh. and in the Feast of Tabernacles. And did they just come and just enjoy the feast and just sit down and drink and eat and everything? Or what do they do, brother? And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. You don't appear before the Lord empty. You give the best that you can. You might be the guy that's got nothing. But when you get there, you go, I know I've been at these things before. And I know that there's going to be garbage laying everywhere. So I'm going to make it my job to police the grounds. And you get a garbage bag every day. Why is, why is Brother Paul always doing it? Oh, Brother Paul, he fell on hard times. He couldn't bring nothing to the feast, man. So he's taking it upon himself to clean the area every day. You give something. You contribute to the rejoicing to the Lord, mm -hmm. even if that's the best you got. Even if that's the very best you got is to do something like that on your own, that's the best, and the Lord will recognize that more than he will just going to the feast. And, oh, I'm the big shot. Hey, come here, you. Here, I got the big shot. No, the Lord wants it from your heart, too. When you get to the feast, he wants it from your heart, and he wants you to bring the very best you got. Let's go look at the Feast of Tabernacles in the kingdom of Jesus. Yes, sir. Finish 17. I'm sorry. <laughs> Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which has, to give, which has given thee. Because when you're giving your very best to the Lord, you're using the gift that he gave you. I don't have any money. I don't have any means to make any food. But you know what? I know how to, pe to clean up the area, and I'll make sure nothing's laying around for seven days. You give the very best you can. Now let's go look at the feast in Jesus' kingdom. Zechariah, the 14th chapter. Zechariah, the 14th chapter. And that's what we did this week. We gave it the very best that we had. We gave it the best in everything that we had out here. In the food, in the kayak, and in the games, in the playing, in the lessons, in the rejoicing before our God. It's been a joyous seven days, and now we're wrapping it up with that solemn assembly. Zechariah 14, and let's pick it up at verse 1, brother. This is the kingdom of Christ Jesus. Zechariah 14 and 1. Go ahead. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. Yes, sir. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the house is rifled, and the women ravished. Uh -huh. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the, re and the residual of the people shall be not be cut off from the city. And this is when Jesus returns. Go ahead. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Armageddon. Go ahead, brother. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And on the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. You had the angel in, in uh, Acts, the first chapter, telling the disciples, why are you standing here looking at him? The one that just ascended into heaven's coming back the same way. And Job told you that. He told you about the prophecy of Jesus standing on this earth again. Go ahead, brother. And there, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall be removed towards the north, and half of it towards the south. Uh huh. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee like ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah, and the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with and thee. And we know that how that's going to happen from the first day of the tabernacle's lesson. We're going to meet him in the air, and we're going to come back with him. All those that are found righteous enough to make that first resurrection. Skip down to 16 and continue, brother. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem from shall... From the arm of the battle of Armageddon, mm -hmm. not everyone's going to be killed, because the Lord's going to... He's the only one that can see through to the heart. He knows that some of those people that are there have the right heart for him. 
so he's not going to kill everybody. There's going to be flesh and blood in Jesus' kingdom. Those that never knew him, never wanted to know him, but weren't worthy enough to die, but at the same time weren't worthy enough to make that first resurrection. There is no rapture, sisters and brothers. That's a false doctrine of man. Mm -hmm. If you're waiting for a rapture, you're going to get caught in the, in the, in the tribulation, mm -hmm. and you're going to be running for your life if you profess faith in the real Jesus. Go ahead, brother. Middle of 16. Yes, sir. Shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And they're going to go up there in the kingdom of our Messiah to keep the Feast of Tabernacles from wherever the Lord has you at. Go ahead, brother. 17. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon him shall be no rain. You're not having a Dominic's and a, and a Kroger's and all this when Messiah returns. Mm. You're going back to the way it was. You're going to grow your own crops. Yes, and if you're not obedient, the first thing the Lord's going to do is take your food away from you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. 18. And if the families of Egypt go not up and come not, they have no rain. There shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And if you don't learn because the Lord's not letting it rain and all your crops are drying up and you cop that little sissy false pride, I'm not going to do it. Like a little grade schooler? Oh, the Lord's going to put the plagues on you. What plagues? I would assume probably the same plagues he sent on Egypt. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. 19. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and shall and the punishment of all the nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. During the kingdom of our Messiah, sisters and brothers. Let's go to Numbers, the 29th chapter. Numbers, the 29th chapter. Let's make it clear how we keep this eight-day festival. Numbers, the 29th chapter. Numbers 29, we're feasting for seven days because we're in the kingdom of our Messiah. Then that eighth day, we're gathering to watch our Heavenly Father come down. Sir. That's a solemn assembly. There's no time for feasting then. He's coming down. He's got the gates and the walls around his city. And at that time, Whatever tribe you've sojourned with of the nation of Israel, you're going to go into that city with them. This is a solemn assembly and a, ga a final gathering together of all of our Heavenly Father's people. Numbers 29 and verse 12, brother, go ahead. And on the 15th day of the seventh month, ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work, and ye shall keep the, a feast unto the Lord seven days. Skip to 35 and continue. So we feast for seven days. Go ahead. On the eighth day ye shall have a solemn assembly. Ye shall do no servile work and on therein. on the eighth day you have a solemn assembly, no servile work, but the Lord allows you to cook on this day. Let's go to 2 Chronicles, the fifth chapter. 2 Chronicles, the fifth chapter. We're getting examples of those that understood God's laws and kept this feast, the tabernacles, to show us exactly how to do it. Because everything given to Israel was written in this book, sisters and brothers. If we want to know how to do it, all we got to do is start reading. It's all over the place. Israel rewarded for obedience, punished for disobedience. So in that using them as our example, we can see how we're supposed to conduct ourselves as part of the commonwealth of Israel. Chronicles 5 and verse 1, brother, go ahead. Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished. Uh -huh. And Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated, and the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of God. Now this was when Solomon was young and a young king and he built the, the, um, the temple of the Lord. And he was in good favor with the Lord here. He wasn't getting old and senile at this time, starting to serve other gods. He was dedicated. His heart was perfect before God. Go ahead, brother. Verse 2. Yes, sir. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chiefs of the fathers and the children of Israel unto Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, Go ahead, which brother. is Zion. Wherefore, all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast, which was in the seventh month. So this is tabernacle. Skip to 12 and continue, brother. Also the Levites, which were, sing which were singers, all of them, Asat, Heman, Ju Judathan, 
with, oh, with their sons and their brethren being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar and with them an hundred and twenty <coughs> priests sounding with trumpets. So you got the Lord's choir all yes. set up, all the gifts that he gave them of yes. all these magnificent voices and all these different tones. And then you got the band that the Lord gave all these gifts of music to. And they're starting to play. And this is the Feast of Tabernacles. And they're rejoicing before God. Go ahead, brother. 13. It came, it came even to pass as the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and with the cymbals and the instrument, instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Amen. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. Go ahead, brother. So that the priest could not stand to the minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. And in this feast, God came yes, down with sir. Solomon and yes, dedicated sir. this temple. And he yes, came sir. down in the presence of Israel, yes, and sir. he kept the feast with them, yes, sir. just like his representative does now, where two or three are gathered in his name. Amen, Go to 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter. 2 Chronicles 7, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8, brother. 7 and verse 8. Go ahead. Also at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation, from the entering into the Hamath, Unto the river of Egypt. So they feasted to the Lord during tabernacles for seven days. Go ahead, brother. And in the eighth day they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the feast seven days. So they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, they kept the feast seven days, and on the eighth day they had a solemn assembly. Yes, sir. They still were able to eat, but the feasting was over, sisters and brothers. Let's continue. Let's go to Nehemiah, the 8th chapter. Let's get one more witness and we'll move on. Nehemiah 8. Nehemiah, the 8th chapter. Nehemiah 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. 8 and verse 13, brother. Go ahead. And on the second day were gathered together the chiefs of the fathers and all the people the priests and the Levites unto Ezra the scribe even understand the words of the law. And that's what we did for Tabernacles. We didn't do it every day. We had some stuff come up we couldn't, but we tried to gather every day so that we could read the word of the Lord during Tabernacles. But here's the thing, the big difference here. Brother Mike and I aren't priests. We're just teachers. We have gifts in the new covenant that were given to all men. But only physical Israel could be a priest of God. And he makes that clear when he returns and he in Zechariah, and you can go to Ezekiel, he's going to take his priesthood from the children of Israel, from the priest when they went astray, that wouldn't make a difference between the clean and the unclean. Their children, when Jesus returns, are going to be priests of God. And they're going to make it clear to all the other nations. They're going to do their job. They're going to teach all the other nations how to serve the true and living God. And then at the end of Jesus' reign, we know that all those that have been taught that are flesh and blood, Satan's got to tempt them just like yep. he did us. Because yep. all things with God are done decently and in order. Where are you at, brother? Uh, we're at verse 14. Go ahead and continue. And they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses. And it was in the law of Moses. Go ahead. That the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast seventh, in the seventh month. Go ahead, brother. And, 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 they, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make booths as it's written. Go ahead. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of his house and in their courts and in the courts of the, of the house of God and in the streets of the water gate and in the streets of the gate of Ephraim. Go ahead, brother. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, unto the day that not they had not the children of Israel done so, and there was a very great gladness. And this is all Israel. This is Nehemiah. This, they were in bondage here. Yeah. And they were given permission by God through an earthly king to go rebuild Jerusalem. Yeah. And they're over here sleeping in booths, 
keeping it exactly the way that the Lord commanded it in the law of Moses. Go ahead, brother. Also, day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law of God. And they kept the feast seven days. Just like we have. Go ahead. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the man. Just like we are. Now, let's go to 2 Peter, the third chapter. 2 Peter, the third chapter. Let's look at what is known as the bounds of man. And if you have a piece of paper, which I know you all do, if you want to do this, I know we all know it, but for those that are watching, they're going to watch it later, take on a piece of paper, draw a line straight across the paper, and number it from 1 to 12. Now draw a line straight down in between each number. So you've got one in a line, two in a line, three in a line, all the way to 12. This represents something. We're going to get into it in a minute. Then what you do is under the six, you put a one. And you number it from one to seven. And that seven should come up under the 12. Now, outside the 12 with no number above it, after seven, put an eight. So you've got a number, you've got a line from one to 12 with each, each number's got a dividing line. And under the six, you start with one and go through seven, which puts you at 12. And then that eight is the number outside of all of them. It's by itself. And with that being said, let's go to second Peter, the third chapter. Now this will make some sense to you. Second Peter three, Second Peter 3, if I had my board, I'd put it on the board. But again, we're keeping tabernacles. We're out at a campsite. You should be able to, if you've done this on your own, you should be able to grasp this. Second oh. Peter 3 and verse 8, brother. 3 and 8. Go ahead. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord as that is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day and the lord goes by god's time that's why when adam sinned in the garden adam and eve and the lord said the day you sin you shall die adam still went when he was thrown out of the garden with eve still had a life still had children but he only lived to be 930 years old the lord didn't let him live one day in god's eyes and that's because the Lord doesn't think like we do. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts and his ways higher than our ways. And in doing that, he can grant each and every man grace and mercy. Because grace is a free gift. When you sinned, you should have died. But I'm going to let my children have the opportunity to come to know how to serve me. And that's why everyone has an opportunity to get called, sisters and brothers. 2 Peter 3 and verse 8 says that a thousand years, a day to the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. Those days in the garden, the evening and the morning was the first day, evening and the morning, second day, evening and the morning, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day, God rested. Now those days underneath those days in the garden are thousand year days. From the creation of mankind, each son of Noah has had a chance to rule this earth. Ham ruled it first. The Lord went to Israel, who was in bondage, set them up to take all the Hamite nations out. Israel and, and Shem ruled it second. You even had Ishmael went into Egypt and took Egypt out. Now it's the time of the Gentiles. All three sons of Noah now have had an opportunity to reign this earth. So no one when they stand in front of God, is going to say, oh, but if you would have let us... No, you've all had the opportunity. Just like all of us had the opportunity to become a part of the commonwealth of Israel by taking hold of that covenant given to Israel. Now, let's go to Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter. Deuteronomy 32. So we got a day to the Lord is a thousand years. You've got those numbers one through seven that start underneath that six. Those are... 1,000 year days. And right now, mankind is almost at the beginning of that seventh day, sisters and brothers. And that's the return of our Messiah. Yes, Don't believe me. Read your Bibles. Look at the news. You'll see the scriptures coming alive if you're asking the right questions. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32 and one verse, brother, verse 8. 32 and 8. 
Go ahead, brother. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Twelve. That's why that top line is one through twelve. And then you've got that bottom line at six. Those are thousand-year days. Those That year from one to twelve, that number on the top is the bounds of the nation of the children of Israel. That one underneath the sixth, man was created on the sixth day. And he's given six days to work out his salvation so he can rest on the seventh day, which is the return of our Messiah. God shows us the physical to bring us the spiritual, sisters and brothers. Let's go to Genesis, the 17th chapter. Let's look at the physical of what this eighth day of tabernacles represents. Genesis, the 17th chapter. Genesis 17. And, brother, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 17 and 1, brother. Go ahead. And when Abram was 90 years and old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And if you do that, Abraham, I'm going to do this. Go ahead. I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Uh -huh. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Uh -huh. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham, for the, a father of many nations have I made uh -huh. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Yes, sir. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be, to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. Uh-huh. And I will get, give unto thee, and to, the, to thy seed after thee, the land wherewith thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Go ahead, brother. And God said unto Abram, Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, and thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. Yes, sir. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee, every man child among you shall be circumcised. And the Lord says this is a token of the covenant, because the man is the head of the house. So Abraham is the head of his family, took that circumcision and he did it because God commanded him to do this but now God is going to take this further because Abram was 99 years old when God appeared unto him go ahead brother 11 and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you and this is a token of the covenant because on that losing of the flesh of the foreskin that's representative of something, and we're gonna go, we're gonna get into that and show you that now. Go ahead, brother. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. So either Israel or anybody that wasn't Israel that was bought with money of the seed of Abraham had to be circumcised. Go ahead, brother. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And it was a sign of the covenant for an everlasting covenant and it had to be done on the eighth day. Mm -hmm. The losing of that flesh had to be done on the eighth day. Go ahead, brother. 14. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. So the circumcision of a male is the token of the covenant. And then anyone that comes under him has to be circumcised in the heart. Yes, sir. And if you're another male, you have to be circumcised. If, you're, if it's your son at eight days old, and if it's anyone else that's hired and brought into your gate that you're taking care of, and they want to join this covenant, they too must be circumcised. Let's go to Exodus, the 12th chapter. Exodus. So this is for all the seed of Abraham. Exodus, the 12th chapter. And Abraham was a Hebrew, was a Hebrew, not a Hebrew Israelite. He was a Hebrew. And his descendants included the nation of Israel. But now when you did what was given to Israel, and you took, and you took hold of the covenant, and you circum got circumcised and started circumcising your children at eight years old and circumcising the hearts of your women through God's word, 
and circumcising your hearts through God's word, now you're taking hold of that covenant. Exodus 12 and 43, brother. And Go the, ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. And no stranger can partake in the Passover. A stranger is someone that doesn't meet the terms of the covenant in this instance. Go ahead, brother. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. But every man's servant that is bought for money, so in other words, now he's part of your gate, and you've circumcised him, he can partake in it. Go ahead, brother. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. Uh -huh. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. Go ahead, brother. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And this is good for all the congregation of Israel. This is the old covenant ordinance we're reading part of because it starts in verse 1. But go ahead, brother. 48. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. Uh -huh. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. So if, if he gets circumcised and keeps the Passover and takes hold of the covenant, he's going to be just like one that's born in the land. In other words, he's going to be just like Israel. God's going to look at him and say, you're no longer uncommon and unclean. You are now part of the fold. Go ahead, brother. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. For no uncircumcised person can eat thereof. Everyone that takes hold of the covenant must be circumcised. Go ahead. One law shall be to him that is homeborn, and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. One law for Israel and a stranger. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. That circumcision points toward Jesus gathering all his people and turning them over to our Heavenly Father. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Corinthians 15, and brother, let's pick it up at verse 49. 15 and verse 49, go ahead. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So like we've got this earth body, this flesh and blood, we're going to have a heavenly body one day also. Sure. And they're going to be just, they're going to be all the same heavenly spiritual bodies. Go ahead, brother. Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. And we've got to get that spiritual change because this flesh and blood body cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This body doesn't live forever. Due to sin, this body, it turns back to dust. You don't shower for a couple days out here camping for whatever reason. You start itching here, you rub the crook of your elbow, all of a sudden you got all this dirt. Yep. This body's always corrupting, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. It cannot inherit eternal life. Go ahead. 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. So Paul says we're not going to all die, but we're all going to get our spiritual change. Go ahead. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. When Jesus returns, this is not the rapture. This is talking about the yes, return of Messiah. Sir. Go ahead. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And the last trump, when Jesus returns, it's going to sound, and the dead in Christ are going to raise first. He tells us about this in Thessalonians. And then the rest of us are going to meet them in the air and return back. Mm -hmm. We're all going to be changed. Go ahead. 53. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. The best way to look at this human body, sisters and brothers, is like you take a fruit or a vegetable. Every seed after its kind. You take a squash, you have to let that squash die on the vine. Take those seeds out that are dead on the vine, that yeah. earthly body, and then you plant that seed. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. When you die, you go back into the ground, and then you get another fruit comes up, that spiritual body. Mm -hmm. Of course, with, with a vegetable, it's not a spiritual body. Right, we understand right. that. Are we done with that, no, brother? No, sir, 54. One, go ahead. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, <laughs> then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. The saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Let's go look at how that happens. Let's go to Revelation, the 20th chapter. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. 
This is the kingdom of our Messiah. Jesus has now had the battle of Armageddon. All his saints have come off the earth. Those that were dead rose and met him in the air. Then those that were alive and found worthy to make that first resurrection joined them. Then the Lord rallied the troops, as you would say, and we're coming back with a host of angels to take this world by force. Mm. God's not playing now. He came a lamb one time, now he's coming a lion. You're either on his good side or you're on his bad side. You want to be on his good side? Become a part of the commonwealth of Israel. Yes, sir. Take advantage of, of the blessings that were given to Israel that are open for all nations. Yes, sir. You don't want to be a part of the commonwealth of Israel? Be disobedient to the Bible? At the appointed time, you're not going to meet the Lord anywhere. At the appointed time, the book alludes to, you won't even see God. You're just going to get, as Mike says, the country slam into the lake of fire. Go ahead and continue, brother. Uh, 20 and 1. Go yes, ahead, brother. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Uh huh. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. A day to the Lord, a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. On that paper underneath that 12, that's a 7,000 year reign of our Messiah. Mm -hmm. Man's given six days to work, then he's entering into rest. We get that same example on the weekly Sabbath, six days to work, day of rest. We know that points toward Jesus' kingdom. So we've got that same example. You've got six days of mankind's existence to make it into that 7,000 year or the rest of our Messiah, Christ Jesus. Yes, Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little seized. And that's to tempt those that are alive that weren't deemed worthy enough to die or righteous enough to make the first resurrection mm -hmm. that are now learning about how to serve God. Go ahead, brother. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, Neither his image, neither had they received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And that's that seventh day, the rest of our Messiah. Go ahead, brother. The rest of the dead lived not again until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So you got everyone else that didn't make the first resurrection that died or was killed when Jesus returned, they're in the grave. Go ahead, brother. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, these are those that make the first resurrection. Yes. Whether you're a stranger or not. Yes. At that time, you will be a priest of Christ. Yes. At that time, and this is for another time, you'll get a new language, a pure language, and yes. the name of Israel is going to be cast to the side. But that's at the first resurrection, sisters and brothers. Go ahead. Verse 7. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Yes, sir. That's to tempt those that were learning about God that were humans for that thousand years. And we can go into Isaiah another time, and we could read about how a child will be a thousand years old. Go ahead, brother. Verse 8, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of, of, of whom is of the sand of the sea. So now at this time when Ooh. Satan's loose, he's even going to tempt some other people and they're going to come against Messiah again. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. 9, and they went up of the breadth of the earth and could pass the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Nobody's even tripping at this time. Yeah. Hey. Uh, Lord, here comes Man. another army. <laughs> eh, have the angels take care of it. Man. Yes, Lord. And off goes the one that made the first resurrection servant, and he's telling the angels, go take care of this, and they're raining fire out of heaven. Because mm. what are angels? Ministering yes, spirits. Yes, That's what the Holy Spirit is, a ministering spirit. Go ahead, brother. Ten. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, Forever and ever. Go ahead, brother. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Uh huh. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. 
and the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. You got the book of life is open where the Lord writes the name of all his servants in it, and then you've got all the other books are open, and that's the Bible that's sitting in your lap. Because yes, God's standard is what he's going to use to judge this world when he returns. Yes, sir. He's not playing with traditions of men and all these organized religions that are worshiping him, worshiping him the opposite way of what he says to do in his book. He's going to add, that's all fine. Let the tares, the tares grow up with the wheat. At the appointed time, I'm going to gather my people. And he says what he's going to use to judge his people, whether or not they're righteous or not, is whether or not their names are in the book of life and the way they got into that book of life was walking according to God's word. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Uh -huh. And they were judged, every man, according to their yes, works. Yes, sir. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Go ahead, brother. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Death mm. swallowed up in victory. Mm -hmm. Now, no more human beings. We're at the end of the seventh day. Everyone's been gathered the first seven days of the Feast of Tabernacles. Now we're waiting for something new. Let's go to Genesis, the 21st chapter. Genesis, the 21st chapter. Genesis 21. Genesis 21. And verse 4, brother, go ahead. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, and as God had commanded so him. So there's the token of the covenant. And it's because of Abraham's obedience, we can read that in the 26th chapter of Genesis, because of his obedience, God said all the nations of the earth were going to be blessed through the seed that came out of him, mm -hmm. which was Jesus, out of the lineage of the tribe of Judah. Yes, sir. Let's go to Revelation, the 21st chapter, and see what that eight-day circumcision represents. Revelation 21. Revelation 21 and verse 1, brother. Go ahead. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. This earth is so tainted and filthy from mankind, the Lord's going to burn this earth up, and he's going to put a new one in its place. But it's not going to be a new one. It's going to be the same one, only cleaned up. Go ahead, brother. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. We're not going to heaven. God's coming to earth. Yes, sir. Like it says in the Psalms, his desire is to live in Zion and Jerusalem amongst yes. his people. Go ahead, brother. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And this is our Father yes. coming down with his yes. kingdom. Go ahead, brother. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. This is what we're laboring for now when we're obedient to the word of God in his Bible, sisters and brothers, when we take hold of his Sabbath days, his uh, weekly Sabbath, and all the feast days, like he had written in Isaiah, the 56th chapter. Others besides Israel I have to bring. All the strangers that don't pollute my Sabbath day and keep my covenant, I got to bring them too, Amen. sisters and brothers. Yes, sir. One fold, that middle wall partition taken down. Now all the strangers under the new covenant can be a part of what was given to Israel. Skip to 12 and continue, brother. And had a great wall and high and had 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, and the names written thereof, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. By the bounds of man, they were formed by the number of the tribes of the nation of Israel. You've got 12 gates. You've got one gate with one name of the 12 tribes on it. At the appointed time, if you make God's kingdom, you'll be showing which gate you go through depending what tribe you've sojourned with. Yes, sir. We know in America today, we know that we've got the tribe of David here. Mm -hmm. We've got Judah because in 70 AD they were scattered. Mm -hmm. They went into Africa where they went into the nation or the, or the area there that was known as the kingdom of Judah. That's where they brought Judah. And they put them into that kingdom. And from there they were scattered 
as God said they would be throughout all the isles of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So we know that if we're in America and we've taken hold of the covenant, there's a good chance we're going to go in with somebody from the tribe of Judah. Or it might be Benjamin, or it could be half the tribe of Levite that yes. were scattered along with Judah. Yes, sir. We don't know, but we know it's one of those three tribes mm -hmm. here in America. Mm -hmm. We know where the ten tribes were scattered all over and around Jerusalem during the times of Solomon. So if you're sojourning over there, there's a good chance that one of those tribes would be the door or the gate that you would enter into. And then we didn't read it here. Well, skip down to 21 and continue, brother. And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Yes, sir. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Yes, sir. And the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Go ahead. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in that light. Nations haven't been saved yet, sisters and brothers. Even Israel won't be gathered until Jesus returns. Yes. It's a time right now for individuals yes. to make God's kingdom. At his return, after that thousand-year reign, all the other nations that don't know God will be taught about God. Jesus is going to gather his nation of Israel. He even had it written in prophecy that there's going to be Gentiles that start coming into the truth after that tribulation. They're going to grab Israelites that don't even know they're Israelites and take them back to the land saying, because we know God is with you. Yes, sir. And at that time, Jesus is going to go and he's going to fulfill his prophetic ministry. Mm -hmm. He died in the midst of the week. Yes. That was in the midst of a literal week and in the midst of his ministry. He started preaching at 30, at 33 and a half, he was crucified. Mm -hmm. And there's prophecy that says when he returns, he's going to fulfill that ministry that next three and a half years when he takes the physical nation of Israel into the wilderness and pleads with them where he weeds out the rebels, yes, sir. all them pimp daddies and everything. Oh, man, who you think you are, man? I, I don't, I, I'm going to go get me sticks today on the Sabbath day. Go ahead, brother. Go get them sticks. Take them outside and stone them next. And he's going to plead with Israel that way before he gives them their inheritance. And then he's going to give those that don't know him their inheritance, and the strangers are going to get their inheritance along with those Israelites. So we're going to have physical Israel and strangers living together, learning all about God. And then at the appointed time, you've already got, you're going to have some physical Gentiles, some physical Hamites that make that first resurrection, as well as Israelites that make that first resurrection. Who do you think is going to be in charge of all these nations that have to come up to Jerusalem? Those that make the first resurrection. The Lord at the appointed time, he says he's going to send all the nations of the earth back to where he scattered them. If you're Polish, you're not going to be living in America. Oh, but I'm American. Tough luck, Charlie. You're going back to Poland. You're going back to Ireland. You're going back to Germany. You're going back here, there, or the other. And those at that time, they don't come up to keep the feast of all the nations. No rain. Then you don't come up to keep the feast. Pestilence. No food whatsoever. At this appointed time, when the Father's bringing his kingdom down and Jesus has already judged all the nations, all these other nations are going to become a part of the commonwealth of Israel. Tell us where you're at and continue, brother. Verse 25. Yes, sir. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. Go ahead. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And the glory and honor of all the nations that have taken hold of the covenant now are going to come to it. Go ahead, brother. And there shall in no wise enter in anything that is defileth, neither whatsoever worketh an abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And if you're not in the Lamb's book of life, You've been judged according to those standards. You're not going to make his kingdom. Let's go to 2 Peter, the third chapter. We've read this. We're going to end with this and one more. 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter 3. One verse, verse 8, brother. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. 
6,000 years of mankind to labor to make that day of rest. Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, and this will be it, sisters and brothers. Deuteronomy 32, and one verse, and we read this before, verse 8. Go ahead. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So, sisters and brothers, the eighth day, the Feast of Tabernacles, the ingathering. This is the day that we're in today, sisters and brothers. And we're keeping this feast because we want to sojourn with Israel. And the Lord commanded Israel to keep it and to teach all nations. So when we get into this book and we start rightly dividing this word, and we've got someone that's leading and guiding us, just like the eunuch and Philip, we're going to come into covenant with God, and we're going to do it by doing the same thing that was given to the nation of Israel. And in doing that, we become a part of the commonwealth of Israel. Those seven days are the gathering of all nations, individuals that have come to Christ that are keeping his covenant and then on that eighth day after the judgment is complete and there's no more flesh and blood our Heavenly Father brings down his kingdom and gathers all nations unto him that are pleasing in his eyes so sisters and brothers the eighth day Feast of Tabernacles the in gathering as always we thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's Word and hope you got something from these scriptures